Hello everyone, my name is Mara Wellens. Welcome to Danganronpa, Trigger Happy Havoc. So this is not a new game. I think it was previously exclusive on PSP and PS Vita or something like that. However, the PC version just came out today and I have heard people singing praises upon praises about the story, so here I am. Um, there's a lot of things I want to get out there before we start, so if you already know about the game, feel free to skip to when I actually start playing. What is Danganronpa? Let's see this theme story description. Hope's Peak Academy is home to Japan's best and brightest high school students, the beacons of hope for the future. But that hope suddenly dies when Makoto Naegi and his classmates find themselves imprisoned in the school, cut off from the outside world, and subject to the whims of a strange, murderous little bear named Monokuma. He pits the students against each other, promising freedom to anyone who can murder a fellow classmate and get away with it. So it's almost like a detective version of Battle Royale, kind of. I'm told it's a little bit similar to the Phoenix Wright Ace Attorney series, which I have played one game from. Oh, one important thing is that this is a visual novel, and uh, my experiences with those are not very numerous. I've played one route of Katawa Shoujo and read about half a chapter of Higurashi, so pretty unfamiliar with the visual novel genre as a whole. Although from what I've seen, it seems like even people who don't like anime like this game, so the genre shouldn't be a problem. I'm also a huge weeb, even though I don't play visual novels, so I don't expect to experience like a culture shock or anything, because I know how weird Japan can be. <laughs> Anyways, Dangan Lompa. Dangan is a bullet. Lompa is to refute somebody, to defeat somebody's argument by poking holes into it. So to defeat someone's argument by the use of a bullet, something along those lines. On the topic of spoilers, I am going into this completely blind. There is an anime. I have never watched it. I don't know a single thing about the story other than the synopsis I just read you. I'm told this is for the best and that if I don't want to be spoiled, under no circumstances should I be googling anything related to this game. According to what I've read, the wiki is full of untagged spoilers and will spoil you. A Google autocomplete can and will spoil you. Looking up music tracks will bring up related videos as well as spoilery comments on YouTube and will spoil you. It is super, super easy to come across spoilers, so if you don't know anything about this game just like me, and you want to you want it to stay that way, then don't do any of those things to maximize your enjoyment. And as such, I'm also going to have to put down my foot here and say that uh, please do not put spoilers in the comments if you know the story already. Uh, feel free to speculate or discuss what's happening, but only up until the point of whatever happens in the video you're looking at. So don't talk about anything that isn't shown in the video yet, unless if you're speculating, I guess. Uh, I will ban people without warning if you put in spoilers on purpose. Historically, everyone's been really kind to me about not spoiling games, but uh, I've never played a visual novel on the channel before, so I don't know what kind of an audience this is gonna attract. I almost have a feeling that making this explicit might attract more assholes, but... Hey, if you want to be the one guy, you might guess, I guess, but I will ban you. So on the topic of English versus Japanese voices, I've given it some thought and I'm going to go with Japanese. And I'm aware that both are functional and I'm not doing this because, oh my god, Japanese weeaboo purist. But uh, I'm actually quite a big fan of Japanese voice acting myself. And I took a look at the cast list, and it was star-studded, and I would really like to hear from them personally. It's nothing against the English voices, I just don't know any of them, that's all. As much as I'd like to say that, hey, maybe I can do a little bit of both, it's probably not possible because the change will just be too jarring, right? So I'm gonna stick with the Japanese unless if everyone starts screaming at me for it or something. <laughs> And this is going to be a little bit weird too, because the characters will have their own voices, but not every single line will be voiced. So I'll have to fill in and read some of the lines, and that kind of creates a dissonance, right? And uh, I'm not a voice actor, I can't do whatever the hell those people do with their voices, okay? But I'll try my best to at least read the lines normally. So, without further ado, Danganronpa, Trigger Happy Havoc. Okay, logic. Difficulty. Gentle, kind, or mean. I kind is fine. Action, kind is fine. I'm not looking to get murdered here. So.
What the hell am I looking at right now? I think we can establish that the bear is not a good person. The massive high school towers over all the other buildings in this bustling urban area. It's like the school stands at the center of the entire world. Hope's Peak Academy. It brings in top students from every field imaginable a government-funded school of privilege. They say that if you come here and manage to graduate, you'll be set for life. With hundreds of years of tradition, it sends the cream of the crop into the workforce every year. It was built to raise hope in the nation's future, which makes Hope's Peak a pretty fitting name. There are two things you need to attend this school. One, you have to already be attending high school. Two, you have to be the very best at what you do. No ordinary student could enroll here. The only way in is if you're scouted by the school itself. And standing there at the gate of the ultimate school filled with the ultimate students... ...was me. I guess I don't need to read this line, right? <laughs> As you can see, I'm nothing but a hopelessly average high school student. Average on the outside, average on the inside. I really don't have much going for me when it comes to grades, special abilities, even personality. I mean, yeah, I have hobbies and stuff I like to do, but it's not like I'm a psychic or mutant or whatever. Like, if you asked me what my favorite song was, or my favorite movie or TV show, They'd all just be whatever's most popular at the particular moment. Even among the average, I'm completely average. So I can't even say I'm your everyday hero type. That's just who I am. Anyway, I figure it's always good to introduce yourself right off the bat. But, you know, if I have any kind of strong point, so to speak, I'd say I'm a little bit more gung-ho than most people. I mean, look at me. I'm completely ordinary, but still. Here I am, standing in front of the anything but ordinary Hope's Peak Academy. I still can't believe I'm standing here. I wonder if someone like me can survive in a place like this. It's got this overwhelming presence, like it's trying to swallow me whole. But it's no wonder I would feel that way. What you have to understand is... Uh, well, let me just tell you about the preparation I did last night to get ready for today. <laughs> That's like 2chan. Not enough porn ads though. Hope's Peak only invites those students who are the truly elite in their field. It's such a popular topic, there are threads online dedicated to talking about the school's attendees. So to prepare, I looked up some of the threads. And all I saw was talk about ultimate students, who are way beyond your average high schooler. For example, one incoming student is the ultimate pop sensation. I guess she's a high school girl who's also the lead singer for a pop group famous all over the country. Hey, check out that girl on the right, the very right side, her face. There's also the ultimate baseball star. He was the cleanup hitter for the national high school champs. Pro teams already have their eyes on him. Then there's the ultimate fashionista. Junko Enoshima. She's been on the cover of tons of fashion magazines. She's what every high school girl wants to be. Oh, and they mentioned the ultimate biker gang leader, too. The scary thing is, he's the de facto leader of every biker gang in Japan. Gangs everywhere love the guy. 
On top of that, there's the ultimate martial artist, the ultimate fanfic creator, the ultimate gambler. Eh, by that logic, ultimate fanfic creator sounds like anybody can go there. <laughs> The ultimate swimming pro, the ultimate programmer, the ultimate clairvoyance, and then some. Reading that made me realize how totally powerless I was. It was the country's finest, top to bottom. I felt like a tame little house cat who'd wandered into a pride of lions. But still, there was something I couldn't stop thinking about. You see, there were a few students who I couldn't find any info on, no matter how much I looked. With all those ultimate students, I'm the only one without any kind of worthwhile talent. But then, what about those other new students who didn't seem to pop up anywhere? Could they just be average students like myself, without any talent or anything? That thought was kind of encouraging. I mean, I know I don't have much in the way of personality. But beyond that, there's an even bigger issue. How did such an unbelievably average student like me get picked to come to this ultimate high school. I mean, I guess there is a reason. You just have to take one glance at the acceptance letter they sent me to see why. We recently held a lottery to select one ordinary student to attend our school. As a result, you have been selected and we invite you to join us as the ultimate lucky student. They spelled it up plain as day. I got invited by pure luck. Honestly, I probably would have been better off just declining their offer. But after hearing how graduating was a guarantee for success later in life, I just couldn't say no. But then, actually standing there in front of the school, I started to feel lost, like I didn't belong there. I could feel myself losing my nerve. But still, I, I just can't stand I can't just stand here in front of the gate forever. Frozen in place, murmuring to myself, I looked down at the acceptance letter clutched in my hand. You don't even have a backpack on, buddy. It said there'd be a meeting for all incoming students in the main hall at 8 a.m. The meeting still isn't for a little while, but I should probably just head in. Yeah, yeah, let's do this. I gathered up all my determination and tried to act like I'd done this a million times before. So from what I can tell, the white text is when he actually says it out loud and the blue is when he's thinking about it, right? Just so everyone's on the same page. And I took my first step toward the main hall. This is where we're supposed to meet, right? I guess I'm the first one here. There's a really elegant clock over in the corner. It says it's 7.10 a.m. The meeting doesn't start until 8 o'clock, so there's still a full 50 minutes left. It makes sense nobody else will be here yet. I was so wound up, I got here way too early. I have plenty of time before the meeting. Just standing around waiting isn't exactly... I should take a look around the school. Maybe that'll help me calm down a little bit. I am a student here now, so there shouldn't be any problem with me having a look around, right? It'll help me kill some time, if nothing else. Trying to play it cool, I took my first step into Hope's Peak Academy. It was also my first step towards starting a new life at a new school. At least, that's what I was hoping for. What the? But the instant I took that first step forward, my view became warped, twisted. It was like some kind of delusion, melting away and mixing together into something else. Spinning, mixing, melting away, then spinning again. And then the next moment, everything went black. That was how it all began. And how life as I knew it came to an end. At that point, I should have realized the reason I was brought to Hope's Peak Academy wasn't because I had the ultimate good luck. It was so I could experience ultimate despair. Prologue, welcome to despair. Yes, I would love to save the data. Thank you. Uh. 
What? Where am I? I woke up with my head resting on top of a hard wooden desk. My body feels heavy. It's pretty normal for me to zonk off in the middle of some boring class or whatever, but... What was I doing asleep here just now? This isn't a classroom I've ever been in before. What the heck's going on? Whoa. Welcome to Hope's Peak Academy. First, we'd like to explain the basic controls. You can use the mouse to adjust your aim. If you aim at an object you can interact with, you can press the left mouse button, and presto, you'll investigate that object. Use WASD to adjust your viewpoint. Okay. Sure, I'll look around. Okay, mouse. I can look around. Or I can use my mouse to look around, which is significantly harder. Alright, well, uh, we can start with this. That's the desk I fell asleep on. I can still see a line of drool I must have left there. I'll have to clean that up later. Hey, what's that on the desk? An orientation guide? What does that say? Hey there, new kid. The next semester is about to start. Starting today, this school will be your entire world. Lovely. It's some kind of cheap-looking pamphlet, and there's something handwritten on it. The next semester is about to start. Starting today, the school will be your entire world. What the hell? Is this someone's idea of a joke? And I also saw something- Oh, what the? Yeah, that, that shouldn't be in a school. Is, is that a surveillance camera? It's a dangerous world we live in. I guess they just have these to keep weirdos from wandering in? Yeah, I, I feel like that's more looking at you. Not, like, keeping you safe, you know what I mean? There is a TV. The school is funded by the national government, so I guess it's not that weird to have TVs in here. Something feels... off. I wonder what it is. Yeah, it's because they're, they're guarding you. They're looking at you. Jeez, I can't believe it's already 8 o'clock. It was just after 7 when I first got here. Has it really been almost an hour since then? That, that in the background here, it says something like, Always on the battlefield. So I feel like that's a pretty good <laughs> indication of what we're going to be doing here. What the heck? In any normal classroom, that's where a window should be. But it looks like some kind of metal plate has been bolted over it. And if I were to knock on it... Yep, definitely metal. Thick too. Very solid. Wait, that's not what matters here. More importantly, why are there metal plates over the windows? Okay, let's see. So what might have happened is... I got myself so wound up, I passed out in the main hall, and then someone carried me here? If that's true, it must mean... Ah, this is a classroom inside Hope's Peak. But then if that's true, that just raises more questions. This is all really strange. I mean, those metal plates covering the windows, it's like it's a prison or something. Ding, ding, ding! None of this makes any sense. I should probably head back to the main hall. It's already past the meeting time. There might be other students there now. <laughs> you make it sound so easy. Is it really that easy to leave? Oh, I never looked up, by the way. You know, he never even commented- Oh. He never even commented on it, but the freaking colors of the walls are just... Not normal wall colors. Okay, well, let's try to get out of here. Yes, please. Jeez, this hallway's kind of weird, too. This is getting stranger by the second. I honestly have no idea what's going on. Well, for now, I'll just head to the main hall. Okay. Ooh, a map. Tab key to bring up a map. 
Okay, we just came out of that room right here, right? I, I guess. We can go behind- Oh! That room has a bear marked on it. Why? Can we not- Let's not go to the bear room first. Let's try to- Okay, we came out of this one, right? Let's just make sure. The door won't budge. 1A. So we can also go 1B. Which also won't budge. Despair Hotel. Sorry, is that distracting? I don't know if I should leave it on or not. Despair Hotel? I guess it's a place for people to stay overnight, but... Anyway, I need to get to the main hall. The main hall? I suppose we probably have to... Um... Yeah. <laughs> yeah, we can just forget about that one. AV room. God damn it. There is also a... Oh, yeah, that's totally inviting. Um... Okay. The school's door. I guess it's not open. Okay, it actually looks like we're gonna be leaving this area. So, you know what? I'm gonna try to jiggle that bear door a little bit. Hey, yo. I wonder where this red door leads. I'm starting to feel sick standing here. Okay, get out. Let's get out. <laughs> well, seems like everything is probably locked, so... That's probably the way to go, but let's just check. Ooh. Nurse's office. Off limits. The washroom can't be off limits, right? Uh, I don't... I don't even know how the hell... Wow, those are really... I feel like those ways of... Like, the boy and girl symbol is a little bit... Unclear. <laughs> School zone, 1F. I wonder why there's a gate here. To keep you in, buddy! The gym. The handle didn't move at all. Okay, fine, I get it, I get it. I get it. Here. By the time I got back to the main hall, everyone else was already there. Whoa, this is intimidating. Holy shit. So, Kimitatsu. Standing before me were the ultimate students that had been can picked by the school. I looked around at everyone who'd gathered here, taking in their faces one at a time. Maybe I was just imagining it, but I swear I could feel a kind of aura coming from each of them. You're not imagining it, buddy. Um, how's it going? My name is Makoto Naegi. Sorry I'm late. A bunch of stuff happened, and then all of a sudden I was just asleep. Huh? Whoa, you too? Hmm. Things just keep getting curiouser and curiouser. Mm -hmm. So strange. I declare beyond a shadow of doubt that this is a strange situation indeed. Um, what are you talking about? I honestly have no idea what's going on right now. Just a moment! There's something else we must address. Makoto! Your tardiness is unacceptable. Surely you were aware the meeting was to start at 8 a.m. sharp. To be late on your first day is unspeakable. I must report you, and you must accept your due punishment. What's your problem? It's not like he wanted to be late. He didn't have any control over it. Everyone, just calm down. Listen, why don't we all go around and introduce ourselves? Huh? The hell? Now's no time for friggin' introductions. <laughs> Maybe, but it may be good to at least find out who we all are before digging into the bigger problems here. I mean, how are we even supposed to talk to each other if we do not know each other's names? 
that's a good point. Okay, so let's get introductions out of the way then. We can move on to whatever else. Sound good? I'm still totally lost, but I think it's best to just focus on getting to know each other for now. So I guess this is as good as a chance as I'm gonna get. I already looked everyone up on the Hope's Peak Academy thread online, but... I still don't really know what kind of people they actually are. <sighs> Time to find out. I'll start by talking to those five over there. Yeah, I'm not talking to that... that jerk wad. Each conversation is important to the overall story, so keep track of how they go. Uh-oh, am I gonna have to remember things? Skipping this guy. Tokofka. Fukawa Toko, Tokofkawa, Tokofkawa. Ultimate writing prodigy. Yeah, she wrote a novel when she was 10. That got everyone talking and launched her literary career. Then two years ago, she released So Lingers the Ocean, a love story said to be her masterpiece. The book was such a hit with women that fishermen quickly shot to the top of every hottest men poll. <laughs> Despite her age, she's won countless literary prizes and all her books are instant bestsellers, which is why she's come to be known as the ultimate writing prodigy. What else would you call such a young and talented author? But I figured she'd be a lovey-dovey type. What with her masterpiece, being a romance and all. <laughs> what? It's not polite to stare, you know? <laughs> Stop staring at me like I'm some filthy creature! F filthy creature? No, I just thought... I, I know what you just thought! You just thought you've never seen such an ugly woman. You just thought it was so funny. No, that, that's not what I was thinking at all. <laughs> Don't bother trying to lie to me. I know it's true. Otherwise, you... I know you can't stand looking at me. <laughs> Whatever. I don't really care. I'm used to it. Wow, talk about an inferiority complex. I was way off about what a successful author would be like. Okay, we got a little bit of, uh, what Toko is like. She's, I don't know, probably the type that lives inside her own head, right? Because she can't, I don't know, she doesn't really like herself in real life, so she sticks to the fiction. Sayaka, Maizono. Maizono Sayaka desu. Ultimate, oh, it's the idol! Sayaka. The way she moves is positively mesmerizing, and that pleasant scent I can't quite place. Sayaka Maizono. When I saw her name in that thread online, frankly, I was pretty surprised. She's in a pop group famous all across the country. In fact, she's their lead singer. As the ultimate pop sensation, she's in high demand to appear on TV and in magazines everywhere. But actually, that's not the only reason I was so surprised to find out she'd be going to the school. I'm sure she doesn't remember, but... Well, never mind. No matter how you slice it, she's really beautiful. Almost like a doll or something. I'm not a doll, you know. I'm alive. Huh? Did you hear me? I'm psychic. Uh huh? Just kidding. I just have really good intuition. She's a sharp one. Huh? Hey, by any chance... Now what? Yeah, it must be. I'm sure of it. Hey, Makoto, did... Jeez, you guys! How long do you plan to waste our valuable time with this ridiculous back and forth? Sorry, just got carried away, I guess. Self-introductions are for introducing yourself, not bumbling through a bunch of idle chit-chat. You're right. Sorry, Makoto. We can talk about this later. It sounded like Sayaka really had something she wanted to say. But it's not like we'll never see each other again. Like she said, we can talk later. Okay, Sayaka, the pop idol. Toko, the writer. This guy, Kiyotaka Ishimaru. Jerkwad. 
Um, it seems like we may have met Sayaka before. It seems like... I don't know, both Makoto and Sayaka seem to want to say more than what they actually got the time to say. Leon! Kuwata! Leon! Ultimate baseball star! Look at that sick goatee. I recognize that name. He played for the National High School Champs as their cleanup hitter, the ultimate baseball star. And that superb athletic specimen is... You? Seriously? Uh -huh. Huh? What's wrong? N nothing, I'm just surprised. I figured with you being the ultimate baseball star and all... What, were you expecting some kid with a shaved head? Shaved head? Is uh, the conception that baseball kids all have short hair. <laughs> no, I was just expecting more of a, you know, sporty-looking, traditional baseball player type. I mean, when I found out that article and the picture of you online, that's how you looked then. Yeah. What? Oh man, you found the picture of me playing baseball? Seriously? I hate that picture. This is not cool. This is so not cool. Seriously, I'm like mega embarrassed right now. I didn't have a choice, okay? Shaving your head like that is part of the national championship regulations. But now I refuse to cut my hair! And I'm not gonna die back to normal either. Actually, can I be totally honest with you? I don't like baseball. Like, at all. I've never gone to a single practice. He's never practiced and he was still his team star player? Oh, he's some kind of prodigy. And as soon as I got accepted here, I quit baseball for good. I have my own dream for the future. A dream for the future? <laughs> my only path in life is getting into music. You can feel the star quality aura I have, right? I'm gonna be a singer, so all I need is a songwriter and someone on guitar and we're set. This new version of me that's chasing after my dream is like, super cool to the max. I can't believe what I'm hearing. I never imagined I'd hear something like that from a baseball all-star. Hifumi Yamada. So, okay, Toko the writer, Sayaka the idol, uh, what the hell? Leon, Leon, whatever you want to go by. The soon-to-be rock band singer. Hey, you can team up with the idol, can't you? Or is that a totally different genre than what you're after? Hifumi, Yamada. Yamada, Hifumi. <laughs> Ultimate fanfic creator. <laughs> By the way, how much do you know about the world of 2D art? World of 2D? <laughs> well, in that world, I am well known and supremely well regarded as the ultimate fanfic writer, creator. Mm -hmm. I once sold 10,000 copies of one of my fan comics at a school festival. The event has passed into legend. Ah, fan comics, doujinshi, okay. <laughs> Some of them didn't get it, of course, seeing I tainted the event. How stupid can you get? That's too bad about them, but selling 10,000 copies like that is definitely pretty remarkable. The words of such idiots mean nothing to me. I am like Van Gogh, utterly unappreciated in my time. I am a soldier, serving night and day to destroy all mindless preconceptions about fanfiction. I'm sure if you were to observe my work, Mr. Naegi, you would comprehend its greatness immediately. For my work is filled with deepest meaning. What, what kind of meaning? It's about embracing our basest urges. I don't think I want to comprehend it. So like a 18 plus fanfic writer. Hifumi, Leon, Sayaka, Toko, and uh, Kiyotaka Ishimaru. Hello. Like the uptight school prez kind of guy. Ultimate moral compass. So that's Kiyotaka. A 
According to what I saw about him on that thread, he went to a famous private school and won top honors every year. He's basically a flawless honor student. He's also known for the work he's done with his community's public morals committee. They say he respects rules above all else, earning him the title of ultimate moral compass. Watch this guy be the scummiest guy ever. Anyway, you can call me Taka. You said your name was Makoto Nagi, right? That's a good name, a strong name. You should thank your parents for giving you such an excellent name. I'm guessing he's referring to the fact that Makoto means sincerity. And to keep that name from losing its value, you must devote yourself every single day. Life is worth putting every ounce of effort into it. Right? Right. This guy is kind of annoying. Ha ha ha!